My dearly beloved in Christ, the feast of the Most Holy Trinity, it seems to me, is a sort of conclusion or culmination for all of the feast days of the liturgical year that we have thus far celebrated. We begin the liturgical year in the season of Advent, and then of course we celebrate our Lord's birth, various feast days of our Lord leading up to his passion, death, and resurrection, and then recently the feast of the ascension of our Lord, and then last Sunday we honor the Holy Ghost in particular, call to mind the coming of the Holy Ghost upon the apostles at Pentecost. And so today we have a feast day where we honor all three persons of the Most Holy Trinity, which of course we honor Almighty God at every Mass, every day, but a feast day to concentrate on this mystery of our faith. This is a supernatural mystery. It is one that we could never fully understand, certainly not in this life. But even in heaven, where the vision of God, the beatific vision, will be the source of our beatitude and our happiness in heaven, even in heaven, we will not fully comprehend the Holy Trinity. We will understand it far better than we could in this life, for we cannot understand how there can be three distinct persons and yet only one God. Again, it is a mystery that we accept on faith, but we will understand it in heaven, although we will not fully comprehend it. So this mystery of our faith then we celebrate, we reflect upon today, and last Sunday, we called to mind the descent of the Holy Ghost upon the apostles at Pentecost. And on that feast, we call to mind the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in our souls. Because the Catechism tells us that by grace, by the life of sanctifying grace, we are temples of the Holy Ghost. So that we have the Holy Ghost living within us but not only the Holy Ghost. Remember the words of our Lord. He said, If you love me, my Father will love you, and we will come to you and make our abode with you. So it is another way of saying that we have within us, by the life of grace, the dwelling of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, all three divine persons dwelling within us by the life of sanctifying grace. And just as the tabernacle on the altar is the home, the dwelling place of our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, so also we can say that our soul, not in the same sense, for our Lord is physically present, what we call the real presence, but truly God is within us by the life of sanctifying grace. And how often do we think of that? Do we honor Almighty God within us? Do we respect the divine presence within us? And how often do we speak to, do we pray to Almighty God? Because prayer is the link that unites us with God. It is the communication with God of the soul that gives to Almighty God adoration, prayers of thanksgiving, reparation, petition. And thus we honor Almighty God and his presence within us. There's a wonderful book on prayer by Father Michael Mueller called The Key to Salvation. And he says in this book, there is a power on earth to which God is subject. Now that at first might seem like a blasphemous thought. God dom dominated, you might say, by a power on this earth. But he goes on to say, yes, there is a power. There is something that has a power or authority over God, and that is prayer. And we find often in Holy Scripture, Almighty God moved by the prayers of the just. Those who are living God-centered lives, they have an influence on the heart of God. For example, you probably remember the story of when God made known to Abraham, 
through an angel that he was going to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because of the sins of the inhabitants. And then Abraham said to the angel, if I can find 50 just men, will you spare those cities for the sake of 50 just? And God said, yes. And then Abraham said, well, permit me to speak one more time. What if I cannot find 50, but if there are 45, will you spare the cities? And God said, yes. And then Abraham went on and said, more or less, pardon my continuing to ask, but what if only 40 can be found? Will you spare the cities for the sake of 40 just in them? And God said yes. And then he went on to 30 and 20. And he finally came down to 10. And he said, will you spare the cities for the sake of 10 just men? And God said yes. For the sake of 10 just, I will spare Sodom and Gomorrah. But as we know, not even 10 just men could be found in those cities. But what this example illustrates is is the power, you might say, over God. And his justice that good and holy persons have. Look at the prayer of the dying thief. All he said to our Lord was, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And our Lord promised him, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. What a reward for so simple a request. And our prayers, again, have great power with Almighty God. There's an interesting quotation I would like to read to you from the book of Ezekiel the prophet in the Old Testament. And this points out the value, the power, of one who is living a God-centered life and intercedes on behalf of mankind. God said, I sought among them a man that might set up a hedge and stand in the gap before me in favor of the land that I might not destroy it and I found none and I poured out my indignation upon them. Isn't that interesting? Think of a hedge and there's a gap in the hedge and God is saying all I want is someone to stand in the gap to protect, to shield the land and we are being asked to stand in the gap of God's just wrath, to make atonement to him by our lives, by our prayers, and calling upon his mercy for the salvation of souls, the conversion of sinners. And God is pleased with that. Do we not often wonder, why is it that God has not yet punished this world in a fearful way? There is so much evil in the world, so much sin. God's commandments being spurned. And we wonder, why does God tolerate it? When will he strike? Well, I guarantee he would have struck long before now had it not been for the prayers and the sacrifices of the few who are still living their faith, making atonement, appeasing God's wrath. There's a story in the Old Testament of Moses. God was angry with the people and he wanted to punish them. And Moses interceded for the people, asking God to have mercy on on them and forgive their sin. And God said, stop praying to me because as long as you pray, I cannot punish them. And of course, Moses didn't stop. And he continued to pray and it says that God's wrath was appeased. And he forgave the people. And so again, the power, the value of prayer. Now sometimes we think, well, I pray and God doesn't hear my prayers. Remember, God always hears our prayers. But he doesn't always grant us what we want in the way we want, when we want it. And that's another sermon altogether on the conditions for a successful prayer. But let us remember to continue to pray, to pray with humility, with trust, with love, and to persevere in our prayers. Because God hears every prayer. So prayer is like the key 
to the heart of God. Our Lord says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. We have not, the apostle says, we have not because we ask not. Really the solution is to pray more, never to pray less. To pray with more fervor, more attention, more love. Our Lady at Fatima told the children, so many souls go to hell because there is no one to pray and make sacrifices for them. So that reminds us that we are to intercede, again, like one standing in the gap, to pray and to obtain grace for the conversion of sinners, that they will be converted and not be lost to hell. So prayer for ourselves, our loved ones, for the conversion of sinners in reparation to Almighty God. But prayer unites us to God. And remember, we have his presence by the life of sanctifying grace within us. All three divine persons, the most holy trinity. God who is everywhere in a special way is in the souls of those who love him. Those in the state of sanctifying grace, which is a very share in his life. Let us be mindful of his presence. Let us speak to him. Let us unite ourselves to him often through prayer. Prayer which can obtain everything if we pray as we should. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.